Okay, I always start by asking, how many of these typing sessions have you seen before? Uh, maybe all of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, that's that provides another angle that can be interesting as well, which is to see what you what you intuit or understand about what I'm trying to do with certain questions, I guess. So, um, uh, let me start with some introverted sensing tests. Um, can you tell me about the difference between your years, your sixth grade and seventh grade years, that's ages 12 and 13, respectively? Uh, I mean, the main difference would be, uh, I don't remember really, uh, I was two different ages, maybe. <laughs> okay. Do you remember this past Christmas? Sorry? Do you remember this past Christmas, what you did for Christmas? Uh... I think I was home actually. You know, the Rona virus. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Uh, but I don't remember exactly what I did or anything, no. Okay. What about. Well, right now it's 10 a.m. for me. What? So, the last couple hours for me, I've just been watching this, watching a couple of different shows, trying to find something good to get into. Uh, on on Netflix, but um, normally, what if if I were to describe my first first hour of the day or something, I would say, well, first I got up, I peed, I fed the fish, I put some bird seed out for the birds, I uh, heated up a cup of coffee, um, I put some creamer in it, I sat down, I uh, <laughs> turned on the TV. Can you do that for? A small sequence of details like that for your last hour or so or two. Uh, a B. Uh, last hour or two. Um, I was uh, hanging up my guitars on the wall. Uh, then I also watched some TV and finally got the uncensored version of Adventure Time. Hmm. And just, you know, watch a couple of episodes and then uh, I hopped on here. Cool. So, uh, you play the guitar? Yeah. Um, what, do you consider yourself mostly a, a guitar player, a songwriter, or a part of a a musical ensemble? Do you produce your own songs? Like, talk to me about your art. Mm. I play guitar in a band, so, I mean, by that definition, I am part of an ensemble. But I do like to uh, be very involved in the songwriting as well. So... Okay, do you, does your band write songs like one or another person comes in with a written song and says, let's play this. Or do they write songs like, oh, I've got a cool lick. Let's build off of this. The second one. Okay. Um, do you record? Yeah. Um, uh, we're recording our second album right now. Are you the uh, primary producer? Yeah, for uh, just... I am the guy, uh, the only guy who has the minimal know-how with it, it falls in my head. So, okay. But I like it as well. If you were to, to break the recording process into five phases, could you do that for me? Uh, for a whole song or just like a guitar? For a whole song, for a track. Recording a track from start to finish. Uh, five steps. Yeah. Well, record uh, 
record the vocals, record the guitar, record the second guitar, record the bass, record the drums. Uh, no that's all I can do. No, five steps. No mixing or mastering? <laughs> not in the recording process. Oh, okay. That's part that's not part of the recording process. Okay, I see. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, you meant when it comes out on a, a, a CD or something. Okay, well, if you were to break it into larger categories, the track making process, yeah. and have one of the steps be mixing, and one of the steps be mastering, what would the other five, the other three steps be? Well, uh, okay, so let's say for the guitar, it would be uh, setting up the guitar uh, so it could perform, uh, and recording the track and so that's four i guess and editing yeah may, yeah and maybe editing some editing if uh, if i if, if i feel this part worked better than my second take or something i could do a little bit of cheating in the pro tool right sure yeah an intj one time told me that Recording a track is, there are four steps to it. Re recording, editing, mixing, and mastering. And I never never thought about it in those terms before, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's say you were hired for a temp job for one day. And you have to choose between a job that, in which you calm down angry customers or a job in which you fix broken things around the company. Like someone will call you and say, the toilet's plugged up again. Or someone will call you and say, you need to fix the latch on this cabinet door. Mm, yeah, the second one. Okay. I, can't, uh, I have a really hard, hard time uh, processing in a vivid emotions or, you know, very animated uh, people. Okay. If I were an angry customer and you were tasked with calming me down, what do you think the best approach would be? The best approach? Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, first just asking, trying to find out what the customer, what you will really want. What is it? Mm. What is it you want? So you would know. say asking questions is a key, key component yeah, in calling them down? Narrow down uh, like, if you would provide me more information, I would know how better to assist you. Okay. How I feel in general. All right. If you had a microphone for 30 seconds and your advice, you were going to give advice to everybody in the world and your advice would be translated into every language broadcast on every channel simultaneously. What advice would you give that you think would be generally applicable to pretty much everybody? I mean, my fir my 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 first thought is just don't bother people so much. <laughs> <laughs> but I think. <laughs> I think that's got to be the funniest advice I've ever heard anybody give as an answer to that question. <laughs> Don't bother people so much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a broad uh, statement, I guess. But uh, if I only have 30 seconds, I can't really elaborate much. Hmm. <laughs> and, and if you know what, what's bothering you, maybe you could know, you know, for yourself. Okay. I don't know. Um, uh, interesting. You can't mind. Uh, when you listen to music, what do you look for that makes stuff worth listening to from your perspective? I don't know. It's just like it's always something that sticks out a little. It becomes too predictable too fast I lose interest so 
like I know you also write songs, and I think uh, I I uh, I had this reaction like, wow, these melodies are so. I really have to listen. I I really want to. I, I'm engaged. I'm moved in the in, in the melody and and the lyrics. So so uh, I would say that that it, it needs to sort of grab me in an interesting way. I would almost make a distinction between real music and almost you know commercial music. Not like mainstream commercial on the radio. I mean like. Or ads and such. Um, what do you think about like prog, prog rock, or musicianship in music? How important is it that people be good musicians? Not that important, actually. Um, I mean, I, I think if it sounds good, it's good. I totally expected you to complete that earlier sentence with. Like, your music, I don't like it. <laughs> That's what I totally expected you to say. <laughs> I mean... Um, okay. Uh, all right. So, so I have a, a perception about songwriting that goes basically like this, that it should be evocative of some archetype but then deviate from that archetype with sufficient surprisingness and or frequency that uh, it feels like a completely new and, uh, I guess, distinct but complete identity. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me how what you think about that idea in general? Uh, can you repeat the last sentence? Um, that that the best songs have a clear and distinct, unique identity, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to elaborate on that? Well, I, I would like to get your response to it. Uh, whether you okay. agree with it, disagree with it, elaborate on it, and or just generally talk about that subject matter so I get your thoughts. Um, I, think, I think that your description was what I was trying to convey when I was trying to describe what I liked about your songs. They have this, it's obviously a cool guitar song with a somewhat uh, eccentric twist. But like you say, it's, it deviates just enough to be, to, to grab you, not to, you know, crush your ears with 500 weird instruments or uh, time signature changes. <laughs> Every, but everybody loves five four. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's possible. That, you know, that, uh, no, nobody loves five four. Um, <clears throat> okay, interesting. So, are you German? Swedish. Oh, Swedish. Okay, I can't really tell the I'm accent. You say you say what? Say it again. I'm cold like Sven. Oh, you're cold like Sven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny that I can't tell those accents apart. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, um, let me ask you some TI questions then. Um, can you tell me if if some sparrows like berries and all things that like berries enjoy basketball. Is it necessarily the case that some sparrows enjoy basketball? Mm. No. Just said some sparrows. Some sparrows enjoy berries. All berry enjoyers like basketball. Is it necessarily the case that some sparrows like basketball? Oh, yeah. Okay. Ew. Okay. The bong kissed me, you know. Oh. 
like when you when it's kind of clogged and you pull harder and then all of a sudden it lets go and then the water splashes up into your mouth maybe you don't know that experience i know it well it, but now now i know yeah it's really unpleasant um <clears throat> okay who's my father's father's wife in relation to me uh, grandmother <clears throat> correct if three speckles are in a margaret and there are four margarets per crab how many speckles are there in a crab uh, again please if there are three speckles in a margaret and four margarets in a crab how many speckles are there in a crab I I I I forget the uh, the name. The... It, it's uh, speckles, Margaret, and crab. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There are three speckles and a Margaret. Four Margarets make up one crab. How many speckles are there in a crab? Twelve? No. Yeah, twelve. Um, if Did you Margaret like. Like a name? It, those things I make, I, I do that on purpose to yeah. to replace things that are actually things with things that don't make any sense, right? Because yeah, it, it, it's a test of uh, of switching between meanings and symbols, I guess. Mm. Uh, which is typically T-I, but also S-I in this instance, because you're being asked to keep in mind words that don't mean anything. Oh, they, they go right out the window when you said Margaret. <laughs> uh-huh. Margaret. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, if you were asked to participate in either a poetry writing contest or a poetry judging contest, uh, be the judge in a poetry contest. Hold on, that's my daughter. Let me get this real quick. Hi, Delilah. How you doing? Just um, called to wish you a Feliz Cumpleaños. Well, thanks, darling. Um, are you coming over later? Yes, I am. Um, so I know we said five, and that's good, but I just have to leave around 7, 7.30 because I have to do a group project, but I'll stay. We could do lunch time. instead. You want to do lunch instead? Yeah, what time? Like noon? Because right. I'm just like, I just didn't sleep well because I'm giving Zuko his, his, um, he had Giardia. Okay, so, listen, I can't talk about this right now. I'm working. I'm in the middle of a typing session, but I decided to answer because it was you. Okay, okay. Happy birthday. Love you. So I'll see you, see you at like one o'clock? Yeah, one or two, yeah. All right. Love you. Bye. I love you too. Bye. It's your birthday. Yes, it is. Do you speak Spanish? Uh, like like all Swedes, I spoke. I took Spanish in sixth grade, uh -huh. and then for the whole thing. But well, you remember Feliz Cumpleaños, huh? <laughs> yeah. So that's the difference between my sixth and seventh grade. I had Spanish in sixth grade. I didn't in the seventh. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good to know. Um, when you when you like a song a lot, do you remember? Do you remember where you were when you first heard a song ever? Like. I remember when I first heard that song, I was just like, wow, that song is great. I, I can think of an example. I remember when I first heard the uh, first song on the Eminem CD, uh, the one that starts with, when I was just a little baby boy, my mama used to tell me these crazy things. She used to tell mm -hmm. me. I remember where I, exactly where I was when I first put that CD. I took it out of the wrapper. I put it in the car. It was in the line of Jack in the Box. Anyway, do you have any any equivalent story? I mean, I I have a very recent one. Um, but that's about it. Uh, it. It felt like your memory had a real... It felt cozy almost. Like uh, it had some essence to it. I can... I, I mean, I could... 
just ramble some songs that I that was the first time I heard that one that but it it, it, doesn't, doesn't, feel, it doesn't feel like it matters to you no not really I mean uh, <laughs> Uh, last week, uh, a new album from one of uh, my favorite bands came out, and it came in the mail. Uh, and I wanted to listen to it, and I did. <laughs> and that's the first time I heard all those eleven songs, but it's not like no. Yeah, I have a similar story with uh, this song. Polly want a cracker. I think I should mm -hmm. get. Cause I was half asleep napping in my girlfriend's bedroom in college, and she had gotten that CD before it became popular at all. And uh, she put it on. And I woke up sort of listening to that song. And I went, wow, this song is really kind of crazy good. Uh, anyway, um, so I, what we're demonstrating here is the difference between SI and NI types, obviously. Uh, is that do you, I'm assuming, so tell me what you've into it before I give you any analysis about what what I've said what I've determined so far what's your analysis about what I've asked so far what I've meant by asking those things and what I've likely concluded from them yeah like you said the the, the last thing I memory vibe to it that I really did couldn't recall so maybe that would be not introvert sensing dominant about myself uh, and uh, mm, that's true that's quite a, about it okay well, can you break can you break making a bowl of cereal into five steps sorry about that can you make, make breaking a bowl of making a bowl of cereal into five steps? Uh, sure. Uh, take a bowl. Uh, take out cereal. Pour cereal. Uh, then, I mean, milk or yogurt, whatever you like, and I guess eat it or give it to someone else. You forgot to get a spoon. Um, who, you need a spoon, though. Who puts yogurt on cereal? That must be a Swedish thing. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, how about how about this? Uh, break, break, breaking the leaves down into six steps. Where the third step is take the lid off the trash can. Okay. Um, or I could just use the leaf blower like you hate. <laughs> no, no, you cannot use the leaf blower. You have to rake in this example. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, right. I, I guess. You no. Know, press X to grab rake and uh, rake the leaves. Did you say? Pull the lid off a trash can. Is the third step. Third step, yeah. So take the lid off the trash can and uh, pull the leaves up with the rake down into the trash can and put the lid back on again. That's five, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is really an interesting. I never tried this before, this asking somebody to do five or six steps with giving in the middle step because... I gave you the middle step is the wrong middle step to give you, right? The middle step should be rake the leaves. Okay. <laughs> the, okay yeah. the first step should be, you know, get the trash can, get the rake over by the leaves, rake the leaves. Um, if you were going to have take the lid off the trash can, which you shouldn't have in that mix at all, you'd have it there. Take the lid off the trash can, put the leaves yeah. in. But um, ideally, you wouldn't have the lid involved at all in this equation. You just say, put the leaves in the trash can, put the trash can away, you know? Um, but uh, it's interesting that, see, if, if you had given me a third step of take the lid out the trash can, I would have made the first two steps uh, 
locate the trash can and then drag the trash can over to the leaves so that mm. taking the lid off the trash can would be the logical third step, therefore. Uh, yeah. Whereas you didn't take that approach. In fact, you didn't think about the ordinality until you'd already begun getting into it, which I think is interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, I've always uh, thought about that as well when, when I watch your typing sessions or I, I always feel like I, I'm more dropped into the scenario because when people mention like get the rake or like why, why didn't you have the rake? You're raking leaves. <laughs> so I, I just assume you already had all those things at at hand, I guess. Right. Okay. Interesting. Um, so let's do some extroverted intuition tests. Uh, can you tell me how many uses you can think of for a uh, lighter, a regular big lighter? I don't have one to show you, but <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, Arsony. <laughs> That's your first uh, first thought, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but uh, I was thinking lighting things on fire in general. Sure. And then I wanted to spruce it up. Um, uh, no, but uh, yeah, uh, lighting things on fire, and that includes like lighting, you know, cigarettes and everything. Maybe. If you have cold fingers, hitting your fingers, uh, uh, you can. Uh, I mean, I, I, th I bet you could use it like as a small paperweight, depending on how uh, heavy it is. Uh huh. Or something, you know, just put it down. Um, uh, you could. I guess the another weird answer is you could just without setting anyone on fire you could just throw with it some someone as mm -hmm. a projectile mm -hmm. uh, okay you, know, you could write with it you could what you could write with it yeah like burn some sort of message i guess yeah that's true that that's a very interesting answer um my first thought was gouge someone's eye out with it. And then my second thought was prop up a wonky table leg with it. You know, like put it, slide it under the table leg to prop, prop it up to make it not yeah. not wobble. Yeah, instead of a book or something, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, it's interesting that you start with the NI of the thing, which is uh, light something on fire. And you add some NE to it to make it colorful say arson you know um and then you proceed to non-fire uses from there uh whereas you know i guess my default is to if someone says come up with a thing one use for a lighter my answer is never going to be involving fire <laughs> it's always going to be something weird yeah yeah <laughs> Um, Maybe if you said you can only come up with one, I would think maybe... I would choose fire, obviously, if I could only use a lighter for one thing. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I would answer something. Okay, the obvious answer is fire. Then I would say something like make make a painting with it or something. If, mm. it, if I only have one shot at it. You only get one choice at a creative answer, then you choose something creative. If you only get one choice... For how to use it for the rest of your life, you'd probably just say, <laughs> yeah. light things on fire. Uh, here comes my dad for a second. I may have to just... Hey, Dad. Just... Are you on the... Yeah, I'm with a client. That's right. I just going to ask if you tried your Starbucks. Uh, yeah, it's so strong. It's like, we have to... it's incredibly strong. That's what I was just going to tell you. <laughs> it's like half a can for a full pot, maybe. I, I just uh, blew my coffee pot up with yeah. a can for 12 cups. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy strong. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Normally I don't get interrupted quite so frequently, but I guess because... Hey, you're, or, you're working on your birthday. Come on. Uh, yeah, I don't care about that stuff. Um, 
Uh, okay, so how are you feeling emotionally right now? Uh, I'm feeling, you know, relieved because I thought I would be more anxious. Hmm. Um, but now I'm just feeling like oh, this was easier than I thought. My, Maybe. my lack of professionalism puts you at ease. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's an attractant. It is. Okay. So, uh, when you've heard me ask that question before people, how are you feeling right now? And how do you think I'm feeling right now? Um, What's your thought process when I ask that question? Are you, for example, are you looking at the two people on the screen, namely me and the other person, and yourself drawing conclusions about how each of them feel? Or are you thinking about, um, are you applying the question to yourself, like wondering how you feel, or something else? Mm. I think I'm, I, I first try to to process that that question for myself, like how would I notice someone else's uh, particular nuanced emotions? And I always get surprised when when uh, some of your other clients say that, "Oh, you seem like you feel this," and you're like, "No, that's that's like wrong. You're in the wrong ballpark." Uh, <laughs> So those times I always feel like, like uh, I, I, uh, I couldn't really uh, see what you were feeling in those instances. Mm. But now talking to you like this, more engaged, I think I feel it's easier for me now to gauge how you're feeling. Okay. So a different. How, how do you do? How do you do with the Inky Pinkies? How I do with them? Uh, I'm. I'd say, uh, maybe I think that they are more fun than I'm good at them. Okay. Like when you, you fully get the concept of it, right? So I don't need to yeah. give you any examples or anything. All yeah, right. mountain fun. All right. So let me give you a couple of ones you've never heard before. Uh, Um, this is a conflagration of a dishonest person, and it's an inky pinky. What was the first word? Uh, a conflagration? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I mean. All okay, right. Um, this is a, a burning of a, of a liar. Not, not the liars on fire, but. Oh, I fucked it up. <laughs> what is, what is I told, I, yeah, I told you the answer. Uh, okay, let me let me give you a different one. Okay, this is a a gang of armed men that has a sh a shiny sheen about them. Yeah. How many syllables? Oh, yeah, sorry. Inky Pinky. A gang of armed men. Yeah. It has a shiny sheen about them. Hmm. Rachel, can you get this one? A gang of armed men that has a shiny sheen about them. Inky pinky. Inky pinky. Two syllables. Move. Gang that has a shiny sheen to them. A gang of armed men that has a shiny sheen to them. No. It's, it's a glossy posse. Oh. 
<laughs> does, does posse necessarily mean they're armed? Well, in the old west, it did. I guess. I guess okay. that's the thing. In the contemporary term of the word, it just means a group of people hanging out with a celebrity. But yeah, in, yeah. in the original term, it meant a gang of armed men, uh, vigilantes, that were, or sometimes deputized men who were sent out after an outlaw. Yeah, because I was thinking glossy, but I couldn't think of a term of a an armed person or group. That, okay. That's funny. That's a, that's one of those generational language things, though, because I guess younger people probably don't think of the word posse in the old Western sense. But I grew up watching those old Westerns like Gunsmoke occasionally on TV or Bonanza or something. So I think of posse is first in the old Western sense. Um, okay, cool. Now, could you make up one for me that you've not made up before? On just So not when you have it already in store. Right. Um I mean, I guess uh, an easy one. Uh, uh, it's an ink pink, and the clue is uh, the thing you have on the end of your arms, and it's on a beach. Is it hand sand? Yeah, or a sand hand. Okay, cool. So... Um, what do you think I think you are based on all of your answers so far? I haven't done any value questions yet. I mean, I don't know, because the thing is, I've been trying to type myself for like maybe five, six years. And me sitting here is... I can't, I obviously can't figure that figure it out. Please help me. <laughs> okay, all right, fine. That's a very very pol very uh, diplomatic political answer. Um, okay, so let me ask you about some values questions. Uh, what's which is more of the instrumental of the two values? So in other words, one of them is a goal in itself. One of them's purposeful for towards some other goal. Uh, which is more of a an instrumental value between the two. Um, your personal experience, like, you know, having experience doing the thing before, or um, your ability to follow through. Uh, follow through would yeah. be the instrumental. Like, uh, you mean like, I have to achieve something and I have to use this value but i'd rather not really if i had it well is knowledge gained by experience and end in itself or only valuable because of what it allows you to do in itself i think but it is, it, is this the same context as before with the... The following through? Yeah. Well, well, what I'm saying is uh, it, it could very plausibly be that you consider both of them instrumental. And I'm asking you to say which is more instrumental than the other. But mm. and so now I'm trying to clarify what specifically you feel about the, the knowledge part of it. Yeah. Whether you see it primarily as an instrumental kind of... Like, Let's say your personal experience conflicts with your intuition on a given situation. Uh, every mm -hmm. time before, this thing has gone fine, but something feels hanky about it this time. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, which do you trust? I would like to indulge that gut feeling. Because uh, uh, I think if it has gone good, up to this point, uh, something wrong should happen eventually. So, okay, um, I, I think that is what I mean. Uh, how many times do you have to have a bad experience with a person, a place, uh, a kind of music, or something before you say, eh, that's, I don't like that? Do you? Do you give things many second chances? Yeah, I think I do. Maybe too many. 
okay. when it comes to people, but not the uh, experiences. How about restaurants? Uh, if you have a bad meal at a restaurant, but your friends go, hey, I want to go to that, that restaurant. You go, I don't want to go there. The place was bad last time I went there. I mean, if it was the bad the first time, then I would think, yeah, it probably will be bad the rest of the times. But if I, uh, if I've been there many times before and it's been good, and then it's bad all of a sudden, I wouldn't write the restaurant off as bad from now on. I would just think that it okay. was probably an error, a minor error. Which better describes your self-understanding of your relationship with people? Is it that you have circles of closeness, inner circle, medium circle, outer circle, or that you can clearly number, delineate closest person, second closest, third closest, fourth closest? Hmm. I haven't really thought about that in those terms before. I think the first was like a general circle and the other one was almost like a... Uh, like a BFF, second BFF, third BFF. Then I think circles. Do you see yourself at the front of a succession of events trailing behind you or in the center of a series of sort of uh, events circling around you at varying distances? Definitely the second one. Okay. Um, what do you think your instincts are better at? Uh, if, if I line up five paintings for you to judge... And then there's a panel of a hundred of the world's greatest experts or something um, have determined which one's actually best, quote unquote. Um, and the same thing is true with poems, um, five poems or five paintings. Which do you think you're you're going to be more in line with the experts about? I think maybe the poems, because I know less about poems, and I would butt heads more with the art elite, because I I think oh, I I have um, yeah the opposite of my you have more of an opinion about paintings is what you're saying yeah All right okay um, in general I have like you mentioned before if uh, how I felt about uh, like a restaurant when it comes to aesthetic things that is very black and white for me so if yeah. you're being honest and I say to you beauty's just in the eye of the beholder it's all just a matter of taste yeah. if you're being honest and responding to that what's your response I mean I would say that that's your opinion uh, and I have it may be another opinion, but I think that there are like real cosmic races that makes things almost inexplicably beautiful. So you're not an aesthetic relativist. Um... <laughs> I, I guess not. Okay, what about morality? What's your positions on morality and ethics and stuff? What do you consider just, justice and injustice? Um, I mean, justice and in, in, injustice for me would be like if I, uh, let's say I committed arson and it was unprovoked, uh, uh, then I think injustice would be that I, uh, if if all the evidence and everything in, in the the court process pointed to me being guilty, then injustice would be that I just walked free or had a very minimal sentence uh, if I hurt people or property. And what would be sufficient provocation for arson? <laughs> Since you mentioned this was unprovoked. <laughs> 
Would I dare you to arson be sufficient provocation? <laughs> you should dare me to arson. No. no. But, um, I'm more of an ice guy myself. Hmm. Don't really like fire. No, but um, I think that uh, there is something in in the answer that is maybe more serious than I rambled on about. And, and that's um, if it's unprovoked. If, if it means there's if no I, mitigating circumstances. Sorry. You mean by which you mean basically there's no mitigating circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, if you could choose between a superpower and you could have invisibility that included your clothes and small objects in your pockets and hands, or flight that allowed you to go up to 100 miles an hour and fly up to 10,000 feet, um, which would you choose? Flight. Why? It, it sounds more fun than just being invisible. You can be that without superpowers. <laughs> I mean, it, I don't know. It feels more super than just... It, right, being, well, you could show off better when you're flying. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I would be, uh, I'm watching uh, that TV show, The Boys. Have you seen that? Uh-uh. It's it's sort of a it's almost like a critique on all the Marvel movies nowadays. Mm. And there is an is invisible guy, but he has to be completely naked. Mm. Uh, he says, "My real superpower is that I see you for who you really are, because he can spy on people when they think they're alone." So, right. I would still pick flying. But you know what? What the truth is about that spying on people when they're alone? It would be exceedingly boring. Yeah. It would be like, <laughs> it's nothing new there. Um, okay. Well, I think you made a good choice based on those reasons. I think those are good reasons to have chosen that way. Uh, okay. Um, let me ask you... Uh, are you in a relationship? Yeah. Okay. Did your significant other, uh, what things did your significant other provide you that you find most valuable to be provided and, and like it when they provide? And if you can think of an example of something that, say, you don't like to be nagged about, whether your significant other actually nags you about that or not, can you give me that as well? Uh... I don't like being nagged about like small have you done this? Have you done this? Why isn't this done? Um, like for example uh, uh, have, you give, have you given the dog more water? You get to do that and I think that's not a weird question but in 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 the moment i'm like oh my god get off my back mm -hmm. I think that, I'm, uh, so i attack my uh, i attack my cell phone uh, and the comfort i would say is just to have someone to be around and and like you know let's say i'm watching something and oh, come over here and then we could maybe maybe talk about it or, um so, yeah, it's do you, sort of a little relationship almost. Yeah. Which would you say is more true of you? You like to be included in things, or you like to include others in things? Uh, maybe include others, if I really think about it. What happens yeah. if you're not included? Does it bother you? I, I guess if, if I expect that I would be included, like if I, I'm always usually included in those things, or maybe it's my most inner circle of friends or significant others, which actually happened to me once. Uh, 
then I would be upset. Um, I, I think I, 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 it feels like if, if I think back on how I behave or what I do, I always assume that if someone says, for example, the 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 new album of that my my one of my favorite bands that came out uh, last week, I I thought that oh we have to have a listening party, <laughs> have maybe that most inner and the second most inner circle of friends because I know they like that music. Mm. Uh, but if someone would say we had a listening party uh, last night, I don't think I would be very offended because I would like, yeah, I listened to it as well. What did you think? Um, by myself? I'm more talking about your wife, really, I guess, or significant other or whatever. Um, by which I mean, like, how much do you like to do random shit together? Like, do you, if... If she's, mm. if she's, or he's, or whatever, is cooking in the kitchen, and do you want to go sit down with, with them? No, we, we usually, for some reason or another, we usually just, when we're hungry, we make food, and then we eat. And so, if we do something together, we sort of plan it. Like, hey, do you want to watch this thing on TV, or do you want to go on a hike? Or uh, so he'll ask me, should we do this this weekend? And then I'll just say yes or no. I'm not usually the 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 one that engage him. I think I'm just I'm more of a couch potato. Okay. Um. Uh. Are you so? If you think about ways of paying attention as being receiving information, sort of unbidden, like watching a show or something, uh, getting information, say asking questions and pinning things down to what exactly they mean or what they mean to you, uh, or um, putting information, let's say talking or taking other kinds of action, or um, interfacing, that is to say chatting with people or or tinkering with with objects or whatever. Given those four ways of dealing with information, getting, putting, receiving, and interfacing, what do you think is your native state of being? I think receiving because... Um, well, I think receiving because I almost never have an urge to just go to something. It feels almost, the receiving is a very good word. It's like I feel something go over my head and sometimes it sticks and then I pursue it. Hmm. I don't know if that answers the question. But. No, yeah, it does. Uh, so everything I've heard from you so far is consistent with you being an INFJ. Uh, I suspect you understand the value questions well enough that my normal, just straightforward posing of them uh, wouldn't be particularly revelatory of the fact that you're anything except, again, confirming the fact that you probably intuit what I'm going for. Your answer for what I, what you thought I thought you were is a textbook INFJ non-answer. Uh, <laughs> uh, everything so far has been textbook INFJ. So, is, uh, I mean, I feel very confident about this type of interview. All right. Well, that's uh, that feels uh, nice to hear that you're confident about it, because I know it's a it could it uh, could complicate the process the, uh, if I watched many of your typings before, like you said. So it's nice to know that you're, you're confident about it. I do. And um, I, as I used to say before, because, you know, a lot of the thing about INFJs is they don't really like telling people they're INFJs, real INFJs, because mm -hmm. 
they understand that it comes with being an INFJ and inherent people want to challenge your type. Right? Mm, yeah. Because sure. it's like, oh, you want to be an INFJ, but you're not really an INFJ. So, I used to tell people when I typed on my INFJ in the past, I don't know why I stopped doing it, it was, I'm your uh, typology accountant. So, if, if at any point the typology IRS comes and audits you, I'm there to appear in, in tax court for you and say, no, he really is an INFJ. Uh, I stand by this typing. It's cut and dry. Mm. Cool. Yeah, I, I would. Uh, I think that's why I uh, turned to you as well. All right, cool. So, uh, anything else? Uh, no. Are you cool with me publishing this video? Sure. All right. All right, thank you. So then, thank you. Happy birthday. Oh, thanks a lot. Have a great day.